Hi, I'm Davey. I'm awesome. And welcome to Davey's Awesome Stories, where I tell funny stories from my past or go on a rant in an effort to make you laugh. This week, I gotta ask a question. Did we, somewhere where I wasn't paying attention, completely forget how to do basic math? Like I've talked about it before, growing up in school, I wasn't a great student. We later found out I was dyslexic and I had to overcome that. And when I was in school, this was not very long after they finally started accepting what a real condition dyslexia is. But that mostly gave me problems with reading that I had overcome. For some reason, math was never an issue with me. I've also talked about though, like when it came to math, I didn't love it. I wasn't like a math fan like most people who are good at math seem to be. I refused to take the harder math classes even though I probably could have done it. The ones I had to take never really were a challenge to me. It really was like as soon as you explained how to do it, I picked it up and I was fine. People in math class used to cheat off me and I was fine with it. People would try to encourage me like you should do something, have a career in math. If you have a career involving math, good for you. But to me that just sounded awful. However, the stuff I'm talking about today, you don't have to be a mathematician to understand this stuff. You just have to have a basic comprehension of math. Like just the kind of stuff like I remember nowadays, the stuff that will get you by. Because I admit that, I don't remember a lot of the stuff I learned in high school. Like if you write out an algebraic equation for me, the whole x equals y type stuff, I don't remember how to do that. I haven't used that since high school. And it's one of those things, you'll, you don't use it, you lose it. But I still can do basic adding, subtracting, multiplication stuff to a point where I see things that hurt my head because, really? For example, my wife started it because the other day she came up to me, she was watching the Tiki Talks, and she just had to show me. Because here's the thing about me and my wife. My wife was the typical hates math kind of person. She doesn't like math. She still hates having to help the kids with their math because math was always difficult for her. Whatever. But even she had a problem with this when she saw a video where this girl said, Did you know that if you saved one dollar a day, every day for an entire year, at the end of the year, you'd have thirty thousand dollars. Did you get your Advil? Because I needed one. As soon as I saw that, my head hurt. Because again, you don't need to be a mathematician. You don't need to be an electrical engineer or an accountant or something like that to understand that basic math. That no, you would not have $30,000 at the end of the year. Because there's only 365 days in a year, not 30,000. If you saved $1 every day for a year, you'd have $365. Duh! I did the math and to get $30,000 in a year, you'd have to save $82.20 every day. And it wouldn't be exactly $30,000, but still, that's what you'd have to do for every day for an entire year to get $30,000. And most of us can't afford that. And it would also take about 82 years, give or take, because again, it was like 82 point something, to get $30,000, saving a dollar a day. Which is a long time, especially when you consider that's after retirement age. So if you want a good retirement, you might need to get a 401k or something, not just save a buck a day. But that was a while ago, so I kind of just brushed it off, went whatever, she's dumb. But then recently I saw another one, another person who couldn't do math. This girl made a video where she said, you ever thought about this concept? If somebody was born today in 2023 with the average life expectancy, they could live to see the year 3000. Are you under the impression that life expectancy is 900 years? I think you forgot a few centuries in there. The average life expectancy is 87. So yeah, if you were born today, you might have a chance at living till the year 2100. Heck, even if you were born before today, the average life expectancy age is 87, but it's not unusual to be in their 90s. You hear every day of somebody living to be 100. It happens. Heck. My great-grandmother died when she was 94. Which is why it was the more irritating when I was at work and talking about how she lived in another state, so I was a little sad I couldn't afford the trip out there to be to her funeral. Somebody had to ask me, Wow, 94, I'm sorry to hear that. How'd she die? 
I told you she was 94. How do you think she died? It was a bungee jumping accident. But back to the living to the year 3000, unless you're expecting that somewhere before the year 2100, science is going to figure out a way to get us to live a thousand years. No, you're not going to live to the year 3000. It's probably not going to happen. I guess it is a big deal that people born in my lifetime actually got to see a new millennium. I just didn't think it was a big deal because the year 2000 to me looked suspiciously like the year 1999. But again, unless you were born at the very beginning of a new century, you're likely to live into the next century. But the next century is not 3000. You're missing a few hundred years. Duh! And these things made me think of one time that I had to explain to probably the dumbest customer I ever had to encounter. A nice girl, but I've done a video about her before. A girl we nicknamed Ham Girl. For those of you who haven't seen this video, go see it, but the cliff note of why we called her that, because somebody made a joke about not smoking pot, but smoking hams, and she did not get it. But the truth is, this girl was a real sweetheart. She was a nice girl, but my goodness, I've had more intelligent conversations with Walls. It was when I worked at a gas station, she came in all the time, always said something stupid. And usually her husband was there, and kind of encouraged her to say this stuff, as if to say to me that since he suffers with this, that I have to suffer with it. Then again, I'm not the one that married her. But one time she came in, and the first thing she said to me was, Excuse me, what time is it? Uh, it's a quarter to five. See, I told you, we have plenty of time. No, we don't. If we don't leave in like two minutes, we're going to have to wait for the next showing. I'm guessing they were going to go see a movie. I didn't ask because she would have talked to me more. But then she throws at him. He just said, we have like 25 minutes. No, we have 15 minutes. I explain this to you. Excuse me, what time is it exactly? Um, now it's 4.46. But you said a quarter to five. A quarter is 25. What? You know, like an actual quarter is 25 cents. Oh dear lord. My head instantly hurt because I got where she was getting this. Because a quarter is 25 cents, then saying it's a quarter till or a quarter after must mean 25 minutes. And as I'm sitting there with my head hurting, her husband throws out, I've tried. Maybe you can explain it. That's not fair. But I decided to give it the old college try. Even though I don't think an actual college professor could have explained this to her. Okay, so you're thinking a quarter means 25 cents. Well, it does. No, it doesn't. A quarter is a fourth of something. So in the case of a dollar, a dollar is a hundred cents. There's no such thing as a hundred cents. No, 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 you're right. You're right. That's what I'm saying. There, it gets to 99 cents, and then once you get to 100, you have a dollar. And 100 broken up into four parts is 25 cents. Because I got 25 cents, if I add another 25 cents, I have 50 cents. That's half of a dollar. If I add another 25 cents, I have 75 cents, which is three quarters of a dollar. And then if I add another quarter, I have a dollar. Yeah, 25, not 15. Well, well I'm getting to that. Now you see a quarter of an hour. An hour is not a hundred minutes. It's only 60. See, you only get to 59 minutes, and then once you get to 60, that's an hour. So if you break up 60 into four parts, four quarters, if you will, it's 15. Because if it's, let's say, 115, and I add 15 minutes, it's now 130, which is now half of an hour. Then if I add another 15 minutes, it's 45, three quarters of an hour. And then if I add another 15 minutes, we have an hour. That's what the quarter means. A quarter is not that coin. That coin is a quarter of a dollar. A quarter of an hour is 15 minutes. So they must have come up with a quarter of an hour before somebody invented a quarter. Don't ask me, I don't know how she reached that conclusion by my explanation. At that point, I'd already tried. I'd already given up. I just kind of went, okay, um, don't, don't you guys need to get to something? 
No, by now it's too late. We're gonna have to wait for the next showing. Oh good, I can take my time and get some snacks. Yay. But this is what I'm talking about. Basic math. Knowing a quarter of an hour versus a quarter of a dollar is basic math. Knowing how many centuries go into a millennium is basic math. Knowing how many days there are in a year is basic math. But people are forgetting basic math. And I blame the bastards who invented Common Core. So there you have it. That's my story video this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell so you get notifications when I post new videos, and leave a comment. Tell me some stories where you had to encounter a situation where somebody couldn't comprehend very basic math. Love you guys.